So you followed along with the Grid 2D Quick Start video, and now you're thinking, but what if I want to do something actually useful with this? Maybe a bit of simple advection? Well, let's have a look at that, because now we have this setup with Write to Grid, Modify Grid, and Draw to Render Target. So if we want to modify what we're doing inside of this grid, we can do that. We can add as much as we want. So I'm going to start by getting us some more space. Then I'm actually going to remove the fade for now because I'm going to do other stuff here. So I'm just going to plug that back in like so. So to do this simple type of advection, you can go way more complex than this. You can think of it as UV distortion. And this grid would be your texture in that case. So to distort the UVs, we would distort the unit vector 2D here. And what do we use to distort UVs usually? Well, textures. So let's bring in a texture. So we're going to go here. We're going to add another texture. Texture sample. And let's call this one noise because noise is cool. And that's going to make it look pretty nice. Going to initialize it and just find a noise that's embedded. This one has more than one channel. And we need two channels, so that's going to work perfectly. OK, so let's try back into our modify grid. And let's read in that texture. Texture sample. OK, can expand this back a bit. OK, and for consistency, again, let's call it noise. And just like in the right to grid, we're going to uh, do um, a sample texture 2D and execution index to unit. Oh, crap. There we go. Okay, so we can grab those and paste those in. So we're going to try to align our noise texture with the actual grid. And the grid has this data, so we can use this as reference, which basically means that we can use the grid 2D uh, as UV coordinates for our noise texture. And let's grab the texture and sample that. So now we have a noise texture coming in here that's uh, matched to the uh, the grid data. So what do we want to do with the UVs then? Well, we want to add our original UVs to uh, the noise stuff. And then we're going to pipe that straight back in. So in UV distortion, you push the pixels once. But here, we're iterating on the data from the last frame, so we'll to push and push more, further and push further. So it will look like it's moving through space. And right now, it's going to really move through space. Well, it is going to when I've hooked up this texture. So let's give it the correct noise texture. And, and the simulation is invalid. Well, that's because this is a VEC4, this is a VEC2. Uh, so let's do a break and make. So we can select which ones, because this way we can pick uh, the other uh, channels as well, if we have cool data in those. Let's do that, and let's add a make 2D. Let's just grab X and Y, because I know they actually have data. And this is going to expand quite quickly, so let's keep moving this around. And now, when we plug it in, it's going to just absolutely disappear. See? Something's happening there. Well, we're moving this a lot every frame. So again, we should probably use delta time for this at some point, but I'm just going to multiply this down by some amount. I just want to move that much every single frame. So if we plug that in. There we go. And now that's starting to look cool. Let's see if we can see it more. So it's starting to blend and diffuse and do all kinds of cool things. Unfortunately, it's pulling up towards the left. And just like in any UV distortion, that's because we haven't offset our um, UVs to uh, minus one to one. 
again, we haven't offset our distortion uh, vectors to minus one to one, so let's do that by multiplying them with a float. So we're gonna scale them up by two. Then we're gonna subtract one. In materials, you'd use a constant bias scale node, but you don't have that here, so we're doing it manually. So that should put the UVs in minus one to one, like that. And that's gonna break, I think. Yes, because order of operations matter. So we're gonna do this before we scale it down by the intensity. This You could plug this into an intensity value so you can control, this, control it from outside the node. So plug that in. There we go, and now we should have even distortion or advection, if you want. Yeah, so now it's doing interesting things. So the next thing we would do if we were doing UV distortion is that we would probably start modifying the UVs of our noise. And we can, of course, do just that. So let's say we want to uh, set it to be a bit more high detail. Just multiply it up to tile it. So we can multiply it like that. And we can stretch it as well. Set that to two. Come on. There you go. Slide that in. And now we should have a bit more detail in how it loops and curls. All of this is highly based on what the noise looks like. Yeah, so now we get a lot more squiggles like that. One boring thing with this is that it just goes to a certain end state and then it gets stuck there because it just keeps getting pushed into that position. So to fix that, we can just add. Yeah, you guessed it. We need time. So we're going to pan the noise. That's that's all we're doing. But we want to multiply on that because otherwise that's going to go just flying away. So I'm going to plug that in there. Plug that in there, add a multiplying value, say, let's redo that because I want that to be a vec2 because I only wanted to scroll in y. Multiply vector 2d, and now we can set this to 0.1 perhaps. Plug that, come on, plug it in, there we go, apply. So now it keeps evolving. Maybe we can have this a bit faster. All of this should be parameterized. You can control it from outside the module, obviously, but again, who's got time? So now it wobbles a bit too quickly, so we don't really get any of the nice curls. Maybe something in between. Right, so that's kind of cool, but it kind of just diffuses and somewhat disappears. Um, let's actually set the material to be additive, just to make it a bit more clear and useful, because that texture didn't have any alpha. And let's see what that does. There we go. Okay, so we can see that this is starting to look a bit like it could be maybe smoke, maybe some fiery stuff. Uh, but it would be nice to add more fire in. And if you checked out the quick start, otherwise I don't know why you're checking this video, you know that we actually disabled uh, how often it, it actually adds more stuff to the grid. Because we only do that in the very beginning. But we could change this to something like a modulo. Or, for this case, we could just add stuff in all the time. So instead of doing this if sort of thing, we can just have an add. So we add our texture in onto what's already there every single frame. 
So this will make it a lot brighter because it's just going to add in a lot more data. But that means it doesn't disappear. And you could, of course, turn this off at a later date in the meter, or you could, again, use a modular to make it just impulse it in to kind of cool stuff like that. Okay, so now we have some sort of advection, but I want to add a couple more things to our uh, grid. First of all, I don't really want all of that detail, so I'll go down to 0.15. And then I will also add a bit more intensity, so it will be a bit stronger. Maybe something like that would be cool. Yeah, so that's pretty cool now that it keeps adding things, and now you can see the scrolling noise texture pulling it a bit better as well. One of the issues is that it just never fades out, so we can do a similar thing to this, but um, I'd rather multiply it down by a bit instead. So I just grab our multiply. And multiply by float and maybe 0.99 so it removes one percent of the total amount of color in there every frame pipe that in as you can see it starts to fade out as it gets up further away from where it's i'm doing air quotes here and i'm saying i want to say emitted but we're just pasting data into the grid but yeah it's looking more natural one of the things i don't like though is that the texture fills up or the emission texture fills up the whole grid we can fix that with a handy node called uh, scale uv's by center so this is the emission texture because we're in right to grid right now so if we just pop this one in right there and scale this down to 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 25, and plug that in, that's going to scale this emission texture down to give it a bit more space to advect around. And of course, we want to clamp that so we don't get the tiling. And there we go. Now we have something that could be used for, I don't know, maybe some kind of simple fire or smoke. This is just a very basic, simple advection style thing you can do. You can, of course, take this a lot further. You can have baked out uh, velocity maps that you're following from a simulation package or something like that. But this should get you started with some interesting advection. Good luck.